Previously on What If Ash Was Raised By Karen Ash departed from Terror Grove City with his newly obtained Lavatar. On his way to Violet City, Ash encounters a Murakura that ends up joining his team. Now picking up where we left off. Ash pulls out his map to get an idea of how close he is to Violet City. After skimming over it, Ash puts the map away and heads in the direction of Violet City. On his way there, Ash notices a dark cave but he decides to pass it up, wanting to get to his destination ASAP. As he starts to walk by it, Miracro starts calling as an attempt to get his trainer's attention. Ash noticing Miracro, asking him what's his frustration. Miracro flies and hovers over the cave, as if alerting Ash to something within the cave. Lavatar, thinking it's funny to mimic Miracro, runs circles around Ash, making a goofy expression. Ash was puzzled by the behavior of his Pokemon, but he trusted his teammate's instincts, so he decides to listen to Miracrow. Together they cautiously approached the cave's entrance. The darkness swallowed them as they ventured deeper into the mysterious cave. The air grew colder, and the only sounds were the sounds of their footsteps and the faint dripping of water. As they delved deeper into the cave, the walls seemed to close on them, and the darkness became more oppressive. Ash couldn't help but feel a sense of unease, but his instincts to trust his Pokemon kept him moving forward. Suddenly, a soft whimpering cry echoed throughout the cave. The sound seemed to be coming from further inside. It sounded like a distressed Pokemon. Without hesitation, they pressed on, the source of the cry pulling them deeper into the cave's abyss. As they turned a corner, their eyes widened in surprise. In the dimly lit chamber ahead, a small green Tediosera sat huddled against the rocky wall. Its eyes were filled with tears, and it looked frightened staring at the mangled corpse of what appears to be an Ursarang. Ash, Lavatar, and Mercro cautiously approached the distressed Teddy Ursula. It shivered with fear as they drew near. The sight of the lifeless Ursula nearby, assuming that it was one, was unsettling. It was clear that Teddy Ursula had experienced a traumatic event. Ash kneels down, keeping his movement slow and gentle as he extends his hand toward the trembling Teddy Ursula from a distance. Teddy Ursula flinches back, uncertain of the unfamiliar trainer and the Pokemon that suddenly entered his home. Ash gives Teddy Ursula a gentle smile, as if saying that it's going to be okay. Teddy Ursula looks at Ash, seeing a semblance of its mother, runs towards Ash, bawling. Ash gently picked up the fragile Pokemon, cradling it in his arms, offering it warmth and protection. Ash reassured Teddy Ursula, his heart aching for the little creature. He glanced at the lifeless corpse, realizing that Teddy Ursula must have lost its parent. Lavatar and Miracle, understanding the gravity of the situation, remains vigilant in the dark cave for whatever could have done this could still be lurking nearby. With Teddy Ursula in his arms, Ash carefully made his way back to the cave entrance. Murkrow and Lavatar following closely behind, the sunlight greeted them as they emerged from the dark cave, a symbol of hope after the darkness that they encountered inside. Ash returns, Murkrow and Lavatar telling him to get some rest, hoping that some alone time would help him bond with Teddy Ursula. An hour later, Ash and Teddy Ursula arrive in Violet City. Immediately, Ash heads straight for the Pokemon Center to heal his Pokemon. After healing his Pokemon, Ash asks his nurse Joy for directions to the gym. Nurse Joy explains that Falconer's gym is west of Sprout Tower. Ash then proceeds to ask about Sprout Tower and what it is exactly. Nurse Joy explains that Sprout Tower is a three-towered, a three-tiered tower where Sage is studied diligently to learn to live with Pokemon. Ash stops to ponder what this means for a second, but then decides that it could wait until his gym battle. Nurse Joy asks Ash if he would like some info on the gym leader, but Ash 
ex exclaims that he's familiar with all the types of gym leaders in Jodo and their typings due to his mom being a member of the Elite Four. Before, before Nurse Joy can question Ash on his statement, Ash runs out of the Pokemon Center with Teddy Ursula in his arms yelling thank you. While running in the direction of the gym, Ash bumps into a red-haired boy causing both of them to stumble backwards. Hey, watch where you're going, the red-haired boy exclaimed, his voice dripping with annoyance. My bad, it was an accident, Ash replied, as he helped the boy regain his balance. The red-haired boy glared at Ash for a moment. His piercing gaze seemed to scrutinize Ash and his teddy Ursula. You're a trainer, aren't you? Silver axed, finally breaking the silence. Yeah, I am. What of it? Ash replied smugly. Silver's eyes narrowed further as he assessed Ash and Teddy Ursula. I don't like the way you're looking at my Pokemon. It's almost like you're looking down on us, Ash coldly says. Silver continued to regard Ash and Teddy Ursula with a skeptical expression. Seemingly unimpressed, I'm just cautious around inferior trainers, he retorted, his tone remaining standoffish. Well, I'm always up for a battle to prove my skills. How about we have a Pokemon battle right here, right now? You shouldn't have any problems defeating a trainer you're superior to, right? Ash says. Fine, let's see what you got. Silver agreed, a hit of anger in his eyes. Ash and Silver stepped back, creating a makeshift battlefield on the street. Silver grasped a Pokeball and prepared to begin their battle. Ash looked at Teddy Ursula, asking if it's okay with battling. Teddy Ursula jumps out of Ash's arms and glares at Silver. So I'll take that as a yes, Ash says. Silver sends out his Sneasel, Sneasel silently setting foot on the battlefield. As Teddy Ursula takes the field, Ash looks Silver square in the eyes, taunting him. Go ahead, prove yourself. Receiving Ash's taunt, Silver gets irritated, commanding Sneasel to use an ice shard. The air starts to chill as Sneasel summons hard chunks of ice in the air. Seeing this, Ash commands Teddy Ursula to prepare himself for the oncoming attack. Sneasel then launches the ice shards towards Teddy Ursula. Teddy Ursula successfully manages to dodge the first two oncoming ice shards but gets hit by the last one. Teddy Ursula sh shrugging off the damage is visibly frustrated for being unable to completely dodge Sneasel's previous attack. Ash then commands Teddy Ursula to charge at Sneasel and use Metal Claw. Silver, seeing this, thinks Ash is being cocky, deciding to meet him head on commanding Sneasel to use a Crush Ball. Just before the two Pokemon collide, Ash commands Teddy Ursula to use Baby Doll Eyes, which drastically lowered Sneasel's attack power as the two Pokemon fully collide. Both Pokemon are sent flying, but Teddy Ursa recovered quickly as it took less damage. Both trainers eye each other down before commanding their Pokemon to use their next moves. Silver commands Sneasel to use Ice Shard once more to block off any escape routes from Teddy Ursa. Ash counters this by telling Teddy Ursa to, to destroy the ice with Metal Claw. Silver commands Sneasel to use Agility, greatly boosting its speed. Sneasel begins to dart around the battlefield. Stealthily evading Teddy Ursa's attempts to attack, Ash realizes his predicament and starts to formulate a plan. Silver commands Sneasel to attack using its speed to cause more damage. Ash commands Teddy Ursa to hold out as Sneasel continues to batter the poor bear Pokemon. Silver then exclaims cockily to Ash, I thought there was more to you than this. Finish it, Sneasel. As Sneasel charges at Teddy Ursa to finish it with a final crush claw, Ash then yells, Teddy Ursa, use counter! Teddy Ursa's eyes flashes with a fierce light as it slams the its clawed fist into Sneasel with all of its stockpiled power from the non-stop attacks it's received. The attack was also super effective, doubling the damage Sneasel received. Sneasel slowly drops to the floor, unconscious. Silver stares at his Pokemon, dumbfounded. Silver recalls his fallen Sneasel, a mixture of frustration and anger on his face. What happened to you being the superior trainer? Ash says, looking down at Silver. It was a fluke. You got lucky. Sneasel is just the weakest member of my team. And Teddy Ursa is the newest member of my team, so I think that evens it out. Ash pulls out a Pokemon and heals Teddy Ursa, petting it on the head, thanking Teddy Ursa for its hard work. 
Ash walks to Silver holding out his hand and says it was a good battle, that he is really strong. Silver is about to hit away Ash's hand before he notices the emblem on his hat. Silver begrudgingly shakes his hand. So are you headed to the gym? Silver asks. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting my first badge. Silver realizing that he lost to a trainer without any badges is even more infuriating. But he decides to look past it. I actually just beat the gym leader here. Silver proceeds to show Ash his badge case. I was wondering if I could watch your gym battle. Silver asks. Sure, why not? I don't mind. The two trainers head to the gym, entering together. Welcome, Challenger. Faulkner greeted them both, momentarily losing his professional composure. Oh, Silver, you're back, Faulkner says. I'm here to witness Ash's gym battle against you, Silver declared, pointing to Ash, who held Teddy Rusher at his side. Faulkner's eyes flickered as he glanced from Ash to the emblem on his hat. His curiosity peaked. Ash, by any chance, are you Karen's son? Ash, somewhat surprised by this question, replied, Yes, I am. What is it to you? Faulkner admitted, I've heard rumors among the other gym leaders that Karen of the Elite Four had a son, but I didn't believe it until now. Why is it so hard to believe that my mom would have a kid? Ash asked, with annoyance showing through him. Faulkner quickly backtracked, no reason, just an unexpected surprise. As their conversation came to a close, Silver couldn't help but consider the implications if Ash was connected to the Elite Four. He might have an advantage that he had never considered. The possibility of achieving his goals by staying with Ash was a tempting thought that lingered in the back of his mind. Enough chit chat, Faulkner interjected, sensing that it was time to get back to the gym battle. You're here for a gym battle, are you not? Ash nodded his head in agreement. Yeah, that's why we're here. Falconer then proposed the terms. The gym battle will be a two-on-two, -two, with the challenger only being allowed substitutions. Do you agree to these terms? Ash considered this for a moment, and then replied, Yes, I agree. Ash turned to Teddy Ursula, who had already battled earlier, and said, Teddy Ursula, you've done your part for now. Take a seat with Silver and rest. We don't want you to overexert yourself. Teddy Ursula nodded understandingly and settled down next to Silver. Faulkner smiled as he released his first Pokemon, a graceful nod to from his Pokeball. The small psychic and flying type Pokemon floated in the air. Are you ready for this, Ash? Faulkner asked with his voice echoing throughout the gym. Ash nods affirmingly that he's ready. Lovatar, brace yourself. From Ash's Pokeball emerged Lavatar, the rock and ground type Pokemon with a fierce determination in his eyes. It stared down Natsu with unwavering focus. Natsu, show them your strength! Natsu wasted no time darting forward like a bolt of lightning, its wings glowing with energy as it aimed for Lavatar. Lavatar, use Leer! Ash caught out. Lavatar's eyes glinted as it moved, locked onto Natsu. Its intimidating leer causing Natsu to falter in midair. Natsu's wing attack missed the mark, and the flying type Pokemon became visibly more vulnerable. Now let's follow that up with a focus energy, Ash commands. Lavatar hones its energies, raising its focus to the max. Falconer commands Natsu to use Psychic. Natsu recovered from this momentary confusion as it began to summon Psychic energy. Ash, foreseeing this, commands Lavatar to use a Pursuit. Lavatar charges forward, its eyes locked onto Natu, striking Natu, delivering a powerful blow that sent Natu tumbling to the ground. The super effective move knocked Natu out of the battle, leaving Faulkner with only one Pokemon remaining. Silver watches silently from the background, acknowledging Ash's use of super effective attacks. Faulkner recalled Natu. Impressive, Ash. I wouldn't have expected nothing less from Karen's son but you'll need more than type advantage to defeat my next Pokemon. With a competent demeanor, Falconer sends out his second Pokemon, Noctowl. The formidable, normal, and flying Pokemon spread his wings wide, casting a shadow over the battlefield. Ash looked unimpressed as he commanded Lavatar to use ancient power. Lavatar, use ancient power. Lavatar's eyes glowed with ancient light 
as it unleashes a barrage of multicolored rocks from the ground. The attack crashes into Nantel, sending him flying into the air and dealing a significant amount of damage. Clenching his fist, Faulkner readies orders Noctow use hypnosis, telling Noctow that keeping his distance and manipulating the opponent from afar is the key to win. Noctow's eyes glowed with hypnotic light as it attempted to put Lavatar to sleep, but Lavatar's unbreakable focus allowed it to shake off the hypnosis. Lavatar, use ancient power once more. Lavatar channels its ancient energy once more, sending another volley of rocks flying at Noctel. Falconer yells out for Noctel to dodge. Noctel, hearing his trainer's cries, quickly reacts, just barely dodging Lavatar's ancient power, surprising Ash. Ash thinks to himself, formulating a plan within his mind. Noctel is open and weak, but Lavatar doesn't know any long distance moves besides ancient power. Ash questions himself. Falconer then calls for Noctowl to fire a psychic while Lavatar is off guard, getting a direct hit doing some decent damage. Ash seeing Noctowl's side beam remembers a vague memory of his mother's Umbreon using a similar move. Ash then gets an idea. Ash calls to Lavatar. Lavatar, I'm gonna need you to follow my commands to the letter. Launch yourself in the air as an attempt to get closer to Noctowl. And I'm going to need you to use Pursuit, but instead of physically charging it, channel that dark energy and fire it towards Noctel. Lavatar, confused by this command, nods his head and attempts it anyway, having complete trust in his trainer. Silver watches silently from the stands, intrigued wondering what Ash is trying to accomplish. Pursuit can't be used in such a... As Faulkner is about to finish his sentence, he sees Lavatar in midair, generating a dark energy in his mouth. Faulkner immediately recognizes this move and starts to panic, commanding Noctowl to fire a side beam, hoping to hit Lavatar before he can use his anticipated attack. As commanded, Noctowl fires a side beam at Lavatar. Ash, seeing the energy being generated, yells at Lavatar to fire it. Lavatar fires a dark beam in response to Ash's command. Silver is surprised by Ash's ingenuity, recognizing the move as Dark Pulse. The two beams collide with Lavatar's Dark Pulse, enveloping and completely erasing Noctowl's side beam due to Dark Types being immune to Psychic type moves. Dark Pulse races towards Noctowl, blasting the flying type Pokemon out of the sky. As Noctowl is plummeting out of the sky, Ash recognizes that this is his chance to end it. Ash, seeing this opening, calls for Lavatar to end it with an ancient power. Lavatar sends a volley of rocks hurling at Noctowl, slamming him into the ground, unconscious, winning. Silver takes note of Ash's ingenuity for the future and acknowledges his wind. Falconer drops to the ground in defeat, disappointed in himself for not being able to knock out any of Ash's Pokemon. Ash walks to Lavatar congratulating him on his victory, and on learning a new move, noting that Lavatar is a quick learner. Ash recalls Lavatar telling him to get some rest, and approaches Falconer. You know, you should really teach your Pokemon some better coverage moves for rock types. If you had, this battle could have gone completely different, Ash says, holding out his hand to Falconer. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have expected anything less from an elite son, Falconer says, as he grabs Ash's hand standing up. Falconer recalls Noctowl, thanking him for his hard work before rewarding Ash with the Zephyr Badge. Silver approaches Ash with his Teddy Ursula in hand, giving him a look of respect, but before Silver could say anything, an explosion is heard from outside. In, in response, the three trainers run outside to see a large tower that appears to be on fire. Cries of people and Pokemon can be heard from a distance. Ash, Silver, and Falconer look at each other before running in the direction of Sprout Tower. And this is where we'll be ending off part two. I'm sorry that I've took so long to drop this part that I may sound a little different because my mic broke, but I've been really busy with college and other things. So it will take a lot longer for me to script everything and write it and all that other stuff. But with that being said, thanks for watching and stay tuned for part three, which will hopefully drop before this month is over.